My name is Shannon Morgan, and welcome to Bigfoot Encounters Narrated. In March 1851, in Greene County, Arkansas. Mr. Hamilton and another hunter in Arkansas saw a herd of cows being chased by a gigantic animal whose body was covered with hair and resembled a wild man. The head had long locks that enveloped the neck and shoulders, and the man-beast looked at the witnesses before deliberately turning away and sprinting off at great speed. Sometimes it would leap 12 to 14 feet at a time, impossible for a human or a bear. It seems that this one was no vegetarian. The creature had been reported in this area for the previous 17 years. An early report of the incident wrote, During March last, Mr. Hamilton of Greene County was out hunting with an acquaintance, and he observed a drove of cattle in a state of apparent alarm, evidently pursued by some dreaded enemy. Halting for the purpose, they soon discovered, as the animals fled by them, that they were followed by an animal bearing the unmistakable likeness of humanity. He was of gigantic stature, with the body being covered with hair and the head with long locks that fairly enveloped his neck and shoulders. The wild man, for we must so call him, after looking at them deliberately for a short time, turned and ran away with great speed, leaping from 12 to 14 feet at a time. His footprints measured 13 inches each. This singular creature has been known traditionally in St. Francis, Green, and Poinsett counties. Arkansas sportman and hunter having described him as long as 17 years since. A planter, indeed, saw him very recently, but withheld this information lest he should not be credited, until the account of Mr. Hamilton and his friend placed the existence of the animal beyond cavil. In spring 1920, in Logan County, Arkansas. There are only logging trails and a forest service road on White Oak Mountain. A hairy, man-like creature was after my great-grandfather's horse. The horse was trying to pull away from the tree that he was tied to. My great-grandfather heard the commotion, approached his horse, and observed the creature, which then ran into the brush. He also stated he had seen something similar on Top Pilot Mountain a few years before. He told me at the time this thing was taller and heavier than he was. My great-grandfather was 6 foot 2 and 190 pounds. At the time, several family members and friends were picking berries. After this incident, everyone departed. He also stated that this was early afternoon. I have been near this area and to the summit of White Oak Mountain. It is very wooded, brushy, and difficult to traverse. It is mostly southern pine with numerous creeks and bottoms, and virtually no people live in this area. In fall 1943, in Lanoke County, Arkansas. I don't remember the name of the little town where we stopped so the driver could report it, but he said we would be in Little Rock in about 45 or more minutes. This has been many years gone by to make a difference. I just wanted to say that I know he is real. I was six at the time, and my family was on a bus coming from West Memphis, Arkansas, to Fort Smith. My sister and I were in the back of the bus on the long seat so that we could sleep. The bus driver stopped the bus to use the woods. He jumped back in the bus and said, Hold on, everybody. There is a big ape out there that almost got me. As the bus started to move, my sister and I looked out the back window and saw what I believed to be a Bigfoot crossing the road. At the time, I didn't know about Bigfoot, so I thought it was an ape that had escaped from a carnival. It looked like an ape that we had seen in a carnival once. It took long strides crossing the road and was not leaning over on its hands to walk. It was kind of more like a big man in an ape costume. The picture till this day is still very fresh in my mind. Everybody talked all night about it, and nobody tried to sleep after that. The bus was half full of people waiting for the driver to finish his call of nature, so that we could start moving again. My sister and I got the best view, because we were looking out the back window, trying to see what the driver was talking about. My parents and a few more saw him start to cross the road behind the bus. My sister and I watched him cross and enter the woods on the other side. It was nighttime, full moon or near full moon, 
There were hills and plenty of trees. In fall 1964, in Lee County, Arkansas. We lived on a 164-acre farm at the time. I was 11 years old and was playing outside in the front yard at about 2 in the afternoon. I looked up and I thought I saw something walking up the road. It was very tall and had long wavy hair, and it was going from side to side, looking in the ditches as if it was searching for something. I screamed for my mom to come and look, and she and my older sister came out. They jumped in the car to drive to get a closer look, but it ran into the woods. At that time, there were several more sightings in the area. The next day, my older brother came over and we found large footsteps in the road. I heard one of our neighbors was home alone. She had heard the dogs barking and went to see what they were barking at, and she saw the Bigfoot kicking the tires on an old car in her yard. In 1965, in Miller County, Arkansas, a hairy creature was seen by several independent witnesses, including 14-year-old James Lynn Crabtree, who was out squirrel hunting when he was alerted to something unusual. He heard some galloping horses running into a nearby lake, followed by the sound of a dog howling in pain. Running towards the spot where the dog noise had come from, James saw an eight-foot-tall creature covered in four-inch-long reddish hair. The creature had very long arms and was standing like a man, and as it turned to face the boy, he could only see a flat nose on the hairy face. The creature advanced towards James, and he was totally scared and shot it three times in the face with a shotgun. The advancing creature did not hesitate, but James decided to flee and run off. In 1966, in Benton County, Arkansas. It was late afternoon and two boys were traveling on horseback into an isolated area, when a man on a tractor suddenly emerged from the valley, moving at full speed in their direction. The man was extremely agitated and told them to leave the area, that a monster was living in the bottom. He had only seen it moments before. The two boys, unafraid, decided to investigate as the farmer drove away. As they'd entered further into the wilderness area, the horses refused to go any further, so they continued on foot. A few minutes later, they found themselves in a gorgeous mountain meadow, lush with flowers and sweet-smelling grass. One of the boys then noticed what appeared to be clumps of white fur lying near the trunk of an old tree. It looked like a dog or an animal, but then suddenly the clump stood up and ambled towards them. The creature was nearly nine feet tall and almost completely covered with thick, snow-white fur. When the skin was exposed, it was a strange pinkish color. Its face and posture was very human-like, and it also emitted a very powerful odor. It made a sound like a radio signal as it approached the two boys. They fled the area immediately, and a posse was formed to hunt the creature down, but it was never found. Dead and mutilated cows were found in the area, and also a human corpse, missing its limbs from its battered torso. I hope you enjoyed today's encounters. I want to thank you so much for listening. It would mean a lot to me if you could like and comment on this video, or even share it with your friends. We now have Bigfoot Encounters narrated merchandise. The link to the store is in the description of this video and on my YouTube channel page. Thank you again for being here and for all the support. I hope to see you in tomorrow's video.